And now that moment I spoke of earlier, to pay our respects to the Americans who have lost their lives to coronavirus, to the families who are enduring unimaginable pain. Tonight, this country surpassing 100,000 lives lost. It would be impossible, of course, to tell every story right here. But we have been collecting their stories, reporting on their full lives, on their mark, on their communities. Tonight, you can see all the faces right here behind me. And now, some of their stories. When they learned their beloved coach was battling coronavirus, these are the young faces who all sent messages, hoping it would help save him. We just wanted to thank you so much for everything you've done for our program and for our teams. We're all thankful for you always. Pick us up when we're down. Coach Paul Logan was a towering figure at North Central High School in Indianapolis for more than 30 years. No one wanted us to succeed more than you did, and we're really thinking about you and your family. Coach Logan did not survive. And at high school football stadiums across Indiana, they set a time, 7 p.m., to honor that coach, a husband and father, by turning on the stadium lights as the sun began to set. As the clouds rolled in, the lights came on to remember the man who encouraged every student from every background to reach their potential. Tonight, his son, Michael. The one thing I want people to know about my dad is how he always put others first. And I can't thank him enough for the childhood he gave us and the legacy he left. Um, we all have big, big shoes to fill. His wife, Kathy. At the end of the day or at the end of the practice, he always had the biggest bear hug for them and told them how much he loved them. There have been so many lives lost. The numbers are impossible to grasp. The five-year-old kindergartner, Skylar Herbert, her parents, both first responders in Detroit, her mother, a police officer, her father, a firefighter. Skylar dreamed of becoming a dentist. There was Margaret Feldman, who survived the Holocaust. She lied about her age to the Nazis at Auschwitz, so they would believe she was old enough to qualify for forced labor because the younger children so often did not survive. But she did, and she would move to the U.S. to create a life here. And she made it part of her legacy to teach young people here about the horror that played out at those concentration camps. I can't say it is my pleasure, but I will say it is my duty to be here with you today and to remember my past. Tonight, her son remembering her. I'd like everybody to remember my mom for her perseverance and dedication to genocide and Holocaust education. She relived her story time and time again for students and adults, so the world will never forget the horrors of the Holocaust. There was the U.S. Army veteran Larry Rathgab, part of General Douglas MacArthur's Honor Guard, a mechanic in his motor pool. He would later join Chrysler and NASCAR as an engineer and led the team that built the first race car to reach 200 miles per hour. Buddy Baker at 200. His son telling us this. My father, Larry Rathgab, was an amazing man. He was very proud of his military career. He was proud of his NASCAR career. Most of all, he was proud of his family and his friends. Corliss Henry was the first black nurse on staff at the Molenberg Hospital in Plainfield, New Jersey. We learned she would become a beloved teacher, one of her former students. Mrs. Corliss Henry was my nursing instructor in the 1960s. Her wealth of knowledge, quiet presence, and fairness were her strengths. She will be missed. Sergeant Raymond Sholwinski, a member of the Harris County Sheriff's Office in Texas since 1979, his fellow officers honoring him and his sacrifice. When I had a personal issue, I called him and he helped. He helped me and he was there for me and my family. When the Blue Angels flew that sky, that he left with them, I knew it, I knew it. There was Wo Jean DeBelli from Tacoma Park, Maryland. She gave birth while battling the virus and was never able to meet her newborn. She had been pregnant, and uh, looking forward to welcoming um, a new child uh, into the community. Wageni, uh, literal meaning is my clan, uh, my community. Her name in her native Ethiopia means community. And now her community has come together to support her family and the baby she left behind. Vincent Barber, the preacher and musician, and tonight his wife, Latresa, who fears some are not taking the virus seriously enough. I'm watching people who are not taking this seriously. They're partying, they're visiting everybody, and I lost the love of my life. 
because he wanted to go get a haircut. She remembers the woman, the doctor, who pulled out her own phone to allow her husband to call her and offer his last words over FaceTime. The doctor at Pontiac General used her personal cell phone to face, allow him to FaceTime me, uh, to talk to me, and I was able to pray with him before they put him on a ventilator. Rolando Aravena was an essential worker at Verizon during the pandemic. He was a communications field technician who was sent to a New York hospital to help prepare for the surge. A week later, he was sick too. His wife on what he said. He, he just looked at me and he said, Mel, I never knew a love like this before, and I love you so much. There have been so many first responders. 66-year-old Paul Carey, a paramedic from Colorado, who raced to New York to volunteer. He would later die from the virus. Philip Kahn of Long Island, who just turned 100 in December, blowing the candles surrounded by family. It turns out Philip lost his twin brother during the Spanish flu pandemic in 1919. A century later, he would die in a pandemic too. A sergeant in the Air Force during World War II, his grandson remembering him. We love you, Grandpa. We miss you. And uh, your life will never be forgotten. You know, his family said that Philip always worried the world would not be ready for another pandemic. A hundred years later, dying during one, just like his twin brother did so long ago. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.